Hi, this is Greg Robinson from MyPhotographyShow.com and I'm here right now to critique this image. This image was sent by Phyllis who uh, said that these paddle boats on the lake caught her eye and she took a close-up of the shapes and colours. Great going on that Phyllis, I really like what you've done here. Uh, I'm going to critique this image in two parts. The first one is going to be about the colour and the second is going to be composition and we might be going into... Well, well, I'll talk a bit about his settings, right? Let's just dive right into it. Uh, for settings, as you can see, she chose 800 ISO for a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second at f11. Now, why that was a good choice, I would say... Well, it's a shame you didn't have your tripod. I guess that's why you pushed your ISO up to 800. Uh, your aperture of f11 gave you the optimal lens quality and best color and contrast So that was a good choice on the other hand You had to lose a bit of depth of field as you can see just here It's a little blurry and back here. It gets a little blurry too Which is a bit of a shame. Um, I would have suggested getting a tripod out using uh, 100 ISO if you could uh, 200 if you're on an icon an aperture of f22 to get the most depth of field possible. Now, in doing so, you would have lost a lot, a lot, a lot of light. Uh, going from I, uh, ISO 800 to, let's say, 200, you lose two stops of light because you go to 400, then you go to 200, and your aperture goes up to f16 and f22. So that's four stops uh, less. So in shutter speed, you go down to 1 30th, 1 15th, 1 8th, and a quarter of a second. Now, a quarter of a second is impossible to um, to do a handheld image, especially if you're zoomed in. Uh, the only lens with which you could probably get away with at a quarter of a second would be with a very wide angle lens, such as, I don't know, 14 millimeter. And even then you'd have to stop breathing, you'd have to do everything in your power to uh, avoid handshake, okay? Otherwise, uh, you, you would get some motion blur or camera shake. So, that's the only options. I would I would strongly recommend trying to bring your ISO down a bit because as we can see, you do have a bit of noise going on, especially in these plain colors. If there's less texture, there's a lot more noise going on. Um, secondly, great color mixture. I love the blue and the yellow. Uh, they both look great. I would have probably suggested trying to accentuate that blue a bit um, in Photoshop. So let me try and do something here. If I just have fun with vibrance, I'll touch also on the, on the yellow, but so you get much more vibrant colors like that. That could be a little more interesting, a little more playful. I'll bring that down because the yellow is coming, becoming a little too much. Let's do some uh, color balance and I'm going to play around in the mid-tones and get that blue going. Now, there we go. That's starting to look a little more interesting. See the difference in blue? Uh, if I go too far here, the problem is the yellow is fading away. So uh, what you would have to do, let me get rid of these settings. Uh, panel here. What you would have to do on that is when you create a color balance, you see here that you have a layer mask. Now what's cool with that is you just grab your brush tool, which is here. Um, you choose the diameter you want. For this I'm going to go here. And the hardness has to be on zero. Uh, and then you just paint in what you do not want that color balance to touch. So I'm going to paint in uh, all that yellow and that way the yellow kind of pops out a little more. Uh, I could probably leave that in there. There we go. So now I can change the blue the way I want it. Let me get rid of that completely. Uh, I can change the blues the way I want. It'll only affect the blue. There we go. Starting to get a very nice blue in there. Perfect. So that kind of thing can be useful if you look at the image before and after. You see your blue pops out just that little much more, which uh, makes the image a little more interesting. Compositionally great. Uh, I really like the way, the flow of the image. The, the image is really flowing nicely. Um, if you have a look, you, your eye is kind of drawn to, into this, this little wave here. You kind of read it from there to there, although your main attention is around here because that's where you have the most detail in the object. You've got contrast here, contrast here, and a lot of contrast here, whilst here there's just one uh, element that stands out. So our eye is firstly drawn here and then kind of follows that uh, curve, as it were, into, into this part here. Very interesting, and we're kind of blocked off by this. So I. I don't know if you should keep that. Maybe zooming in a little more could have been interesting. Let's try it out, see what happens. Uh, kind of zooming in there, you see? Making an image a bit like that. That makes a completely different image. As you can see, it's not kind of blocked off like that with a, with a, a very dynamic diagonal line. 
It kind of keeps us in these swaying motions. Maybe a bit of that hard edge over there, sorry, uh, seems pretty tough too. So why not just try that? Uh, there we go, completely different image now. <laughs> so try around. This is called working the subject, by the way. When you're on location and you're shooting, take a broad uh, shot of your image, then zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and get, get into different parts of the image, get into different parts of the subject. You know, try it like this and like that and go vertical and go horizontal and uh, zoom and change your depth of field. And that's just working your subject. You have one subject, you have millions of photographic possibilities. Okay, so just have fun with it and keep working it, working it, and when you come back home and have a look at your image on post-production, that's where you'll choose your final image, which one was the most interesting. At least you won't be deceived by the fact of saying, oh, I should have worked it a bit more, I should have, I should have zoomed in like that, or, you know, get as many images as you can of your subject, because the next day it might just not be there anymore, okay? So there we go, I hope this critique helps you out, I hope it helps you other viewers out. Uh, don't hesitate to send your images to myphotographyshow.com. You can also follow us on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, we have different things going on there. Hope to see you soon. Please send your images in for a critique. It's completely free. I just love doing it. I love discovering your different photos. And if it helps you in learning photography, then I am even more overwhelmed. See you soon on myphotographyshow.com.